Look at that. Woo, look at this. The most intense crocodile to work with. Ooh. Look at how freaking big he's gotten. Finally, we're getting a predator. We have some cocoa puffs running around with these little humps. Usually he rattles like crazy, but I haven't upset him yet, so he's chilling. I'd like to handle him without getting bit. Let's see. There you go, big boy. Uh oh, relax, Kevin. Relax, Kevin. And then I said, you're going to buy me? You're going to buy me. And then she bit the crap out of my leg. And I said to myself, never murky water with crocodiles again, only crystal clear. But boy, you want a treat? You're my boy. Good boy. What's going on, my beautiful people? I know what you're thinking. Is that a baby bottle in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> it's time to feed the camel. Let's go see how Kamara's doing. Get this bottle, boy. Oh, yeah. Welcome, beautiful people. What's up? This is Ruth's channel. I don't know what channel it is anymore. I took the channel from him. I'm going to educate you about this camo right here. Beautiful eyelashes. Look at this. Sponsored by Fenty. And then right here. Ooh. Chandler didn't have that budget for the two hump, but hey, we can do something with that one hump. We can do something with that. Anyways, <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro, I got tired. Man, give me that. <laughs> Come on, home three, my sweet boy, my my squeeze, my 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 sweet cheese, my my boy, my good time friend, my my everything right here. Come on, home three. Look how freaking big he's gone. And very soon, in the next week or two, we're getting him a brother. Finally, we're getting a brother. Here's a photo of him. Oh, he's a little tan boy. He looks like a white camel, but they start off looking white when they're tan, when they're babies, and then they turn tan later on. So we're gonna have a blonde camel and a nice brown camel. We're gonna have some cocoa puffs running around with these little humps. So we're gonna have two males. We're not gonna be breeding camels. Camels go through mating season. When they go through the rut, they start frothing at the mouth and they become very dangerous and very volatile. So uh, what we're gonna do is castrate them. We're gonna cut his balls off, but don't, shh, it's okay, it's okay. We just don't wanna, we don't wanna get trampled by a camel when he goes through puberty. So we're just gonna have two lovely brothers, uh, two lovely brothers that are eunuchs, and they're gonna be awesome. Oh, oh my goodness, get off my sandal. You beautiful beast, look at that, he's got a goatee, he's got a mullet, he's got everything, baby. I might even get myself a, a new mullet. Look at this, look how big he is, this is insane. Oh my goodness. Ruth, jump up on him, ride him. Nope, nope. You have to wait about six years until they're fully grown before you ride them. I love him so much. Camels have truly become one of my favorite mammals on the planet. I hope they've become a favorite mammal for you guys too. I know a lot of you guys comment, I never knew a camel could be that friendly. Well, I bet you didn't know they're better than horses. Yeah, I said it. Ooh, we got a bunch of, a bunch of people in the comments going, no, but it's true. Camels are stronger, they're bigger, they're more loving and psh, they got a hump right where you're supposed to sit. How cool is that? Who wants a flat backed horse with nothing in the way? No one. Lame. Lame. Man, what you gotta say about horses? Oh, don't, you, you gotta bleep that, bro. No! My turtle needs help. What are you doing, bro? Look at this turtle right here. I got an Indian spotted turtle with my baby gators and I just found one flipped over in the sun. This little thing is so on. One of these keys will work, don't worry. Come on, come on, come on. It's come not on. that one. It's, oh no, it's not that one either. There we go. Okay, it's not that one. Come on, man, the turtle, the turtle. Ah! Cancel. Stop. Bro, what are you doing? All right, oh, it looks like I just need to put some more mulch in here. He was probably getting over this lip and he flipped himself. But look, we got the little baby alligators in here that FWC donated. Sweet little babies, oh, they're so adorable when they come out of the egg. And they're even smaller than this. When they hatch out of the egg, they're only the size about, about six inches long, that tail right there. And when they come out, they got these yellow bands to match with the sawgrass, that yellow dying grass. These guys look cute, but they do not make good pets. Sadly, in states that don't have regulation, people sell these like crazy at reptile expos. You gotta say no, you gotta have some self-control because these guys need proper sunlight to grow. They need good diet. And also you gotta know what you're doing to keep the animals safe and yourself safe. So definitely don't get baby alligators as pets. They make terrible pets. Get yourself a leopard gecko. They stay this size. Right, little guy? You're so cute. Oh, he's angry. <laughs> there you go. 
I'm gonna take care of this mulch so that turtle doesn't flip again, and I'll see you guys in a split. <laughs> guys I gotta put your mulch in. We got one that's buried right here. Beautiful Indian spotted turtles critically endangered from India and they get like that big beautiful turtles right there in the water. Let's get this baby hooked up with some more mulch baby. Yeah yeah okay got a little bit of moisture a little bit of humidity oh give it a good slap okay flatten that down now they shouldn't be flipping over. What are you looking at fool? Look at this. This is Guapo, the Cuban crocodile that we got a couple months back. Look how much bigger he's grown. Look at this. He's got a full belly full of shrimp because we're feeding him live shrimp from the bait shops. We're giving him blue crab, live blue crab, so he can crush down the shell, eat the calcium, and grow more teeth. Look at that. Even as a young Cuban crocodile, they still have curved back teeth like a velociraptor, making them the most intense crocodile to work with. These guys are so athletic, galloping with these long terrestrial legs and able to jump and grab their prey out of trees over the water. These guys eat what's called a jutilla. It's like a big rat with a long tail and they hang up in the trees in Cuba. And these crocs have to be athletic enough to jump out of the water using their tail, grab the jutilla out of the tree and bring it down to eat. There's not a lot of food out in the swamps of Cuba, the Zapata swamps. So they have to take advantage of every opportunity they can get for food. He is such a beautiful Cuban. I mean, look, comment below. Do you guys think he's gotten bigger? I definitely think he's grown a little bit. What a beast. Love Cuban crocodiles. All right, guys, we're gonna go take care of Kevin. We're gonna fill up his big water tub. Just maintaining the kings of kingdom. Oh, here comes Kevin. He's trying to check me out. What's up, dude? Want some water? Want some water? Huh? Wanna drink some water out the hose? There you go, big boy. Good boy. Uh oh, uh oh, that's not a snake. You can't eat that. There you go, good boy. Drinking right out of the hose, just like a nice Florida boy should. Uh oh. <laughs> Kevin, you good. For any of you guys that are new to the channel, Kevin is a 14 foot Malaysian King Cobra. What's going on, bro? What's going on? Don't attack the hose. The hose is not food. It's not a snake. Kevin has finally eaten a second meal. He didn't eat for like five months and he finally had a good meal. You see that open mouth strike? He will bite. A lot of people think that he's tame and that he won't bite somebody, but the reality of it is he's still a wild animal and it takes focus and reading the body language to be able to work around him. Decade of experience to be able to read this animal safely and work around him. You can see he's got a full belly right now. His scales are spread wide, so he's gonna start gaining all that weight. And then by next breeding season, we're gonna have a girlfriend ready for him. So we're gonna produce Malaysian King Cobras and continue his bloodline. I want in the future to raise up his babies and have them for display for decades to come. He's an amazing animal. I want his bloodline to continue. You wanna go for a swim? Huh? What are you looking for, bud? King cobras are the smartest snakes on the planet. Next to black mambas and other types of snakes like Kribo snakes, these guys are definitely the smartest out there. What's going on, dude? Relax. Easy. 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 Relax. Look at him. Incredible. A king cobra can actually hit up five to six foot off of the ground looking a grown man right in the eyes. It's incredible. What's going on, dude? It's okay. It's okay. What's going on? You beautiful boy. You can see the intelligence in the eyes of a king cobra. They are true dragons. <sighs> what an amazing animal. Want some more water? Uh oh. Uh oh. Relax, Kevin. Relax, Kevin. You're gonna bite something in my nose, not me. But he's investigating, he's checking it out. He knows it's not food, but he wants to know what it is and why it's here. Want some water, buddy? Yeah, look, have some water. Relax, buddy. Look at him, he's a dragon. Woo, relax. Nice and easy, boy. Relax. Be good. Some nice water, there you go. Look how incredible his chevrons are. The chevrons are these bands that go behind the hood and the neck right here. You can see all that. These bands are gorgeous, and throughout the mating season, they glow with coloration. Oi, relax, relax. You're gonna chase me up onto my bench. That's not nice. That's not nice. You're a cranky king cobra, huh? Relax.
What are you doing? You're gonna let me finish filling up this tub? Look how massive he is. What a beast of a King Cobra. Huge. He stretches across the whole enclosure. And if I could give him more space, I would. But for now, this is plenty. Isn't that right, big boy? You are cranky today. You are very cranky. It's okay. Relax. Beautiful boy. Proud of you, Kevin. Keep eating, keep getting big. Look at these swimming right now. They love the water. Right? Good boy. I know. I know. You're wondering what Ruth's up to. Hmm? You gonna get her? Incredible animal. Hello, Buttercup. <laughs> Woo! We're gonna be taking care of Pearl, the white cobra. She's a monocle, but before we do that, we gotta empty this can. I was just cleaning another enclosure. I gotta be super careful with this snake because the strike range will get you right in the face. Let's see. She's real gentle and. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. Careful, man, careful. I'm gonna hold it just by the tip of the hook. I'm kinda scared about it. Woo! Alright, let's get it back into the enclosure. Really smooth, really easy. It's a, it's a young ball python. If you're not careful, they'll rope into a ball and roll right into your feet and knock you over. You're really dangerous. Woo! Get it right into there. Use the hook to close it. Safety first. Safety first, guys. All right, now let's deal with this monocled cobra. This is a leucistic monocled cobra that Tyler Nolan gave me as a gift because he was so appreciative of me taking care of his snakes for so long while he was getting his new snake room set up that he gave me this beautiful cobra. Come here. Look at this beautiful leucistic. So you've seen the albino that I've got. It's got like a yellowish hue to it. This is a leucistic. Look at that. It's actually deep in shed, but it still looks beautiful. I've been giving this girl some nice rats, making sure she gets nice and thick. She is a gorgeous snake and she's got lots of enthusiasm. Look at that, ooh. So basically, there's a liquid layer in between the old and the new skin, making them temporarily blind. So right now, it's kind of difficult for the snake to see, so it's just seeing shadows right now. Makes it more dangerous to handle snakes when they're like this because they're more irritable, obviously with all that flaky skin that's about to come off. What's up? Ooh, cranky girl. Ooh, cranky, cranky, cranky. Drop for drop, more venomous than a king cobra because this is a true cobra being a monocle cobra. All right, let's get her right into her holding receptacle. There we go, nice and easy. And I'm just gonna give her some fresh water. All right, I gotta get this all cleaned up. Make sure everything's nice and spotless so the animals are nice and clean. And also the people who come here on tours don't have the smell of snake poop up in their nose. You don't want people to walk into a snake house and get a whiff of like pet store. I don't like that. The best thing is for every single enclosure to be spotless. So when people have their first impression of snakes, they don't think snakes are nasty and smelly. So let's make sure everything's taken care of. And, and if you want, book a tour on ChandlersWildlife.com and come get a tour with me here at the Wild World. By the way, it costs $550 for the tour. It's a flat rate, but you can bring up to five people with you. So that's six people total. That's a really good deal. You get to hang out with your Asian eagle owl, see King Cobras up close, get a tour of all the snakes, get a hold crocodiles, get to see me get up close with the crocodile that bit my leg. You can even feed the croc that bit my leg. Were you about to touch my leg? Go ahead, you can touch my leg. It don't even hurt. Let's go in one, two. Ooh, baby. Ooh, we just got it clean. Ooh, baby, won't you sing with me? Hey. Ooh, baby, don't you want to see my beautiful white cobra in front of thee? Ooh, take it, Ruth. Yes, I like king cobras. I like white cobras, but they can kill me. But I want to kiss them. Ooh. But you shouldn't. Morph Market gets angry. All right, let's get this baby opened up. We got a nice clean enclosure. Look at her, she is a cranky girl. We got to do another video with her when she comes out of shed. When she comes out of shed, she's beautiful, but even deep in shed, she still looks beautifully creamy white. Look at that. Ooh. What's going on, mama? I'm sorry. She's getting nice and big, and she's going to get upgraded soon, so she's going to be growing like crazy. Come on, mama. There you go, she can't see that well right now. Right into there, use the hook to close it up so it's nice and safe. Get a lock on that baby, make sure it's nice and secure. Whew, nothing like uh, using a proper tool to, to handle these venomous reptiles. Guys, we actually had the Army Rangers from the Eglin Air Force Base, the same base that Steve Irwin filmed at, helping them learn how to handle snakes and relocating venomous snakes out of their training grounds. They came out here and they wanted a personal lesson on a handle of rattlesnakes. Check out this clip. So I put my hook between the last and the middle third, gently lift it up, 
Place the hook in between the first and the middle, readjust if I have to. Keep the sink parallel to the ground. See how calm he is? Mm -hmm. Usually he rattles like crazy, but I haven't upset him yet, so he's chilling. See how his temperament is right now. This snake's not upset. Yeah. This snake's not freaking out. Yeah. You can be a little more confident with it. Yeah. Just expect a retaliation, maybe a quick look back and a strike. Yeah. But your goal right now is to get that last third up to your hand, high off the ground. Perfect hand placement, never pulling on the tip of the tail. Always pass that cloaca so we don't pull on the butt hole of the snake. Yes. All right, it's okay. Just readjust. Turn around without hitting your buddies in the All face. Right. There you go. Readjust again if you have to, because he's going to keep slipping off the hook. There you go. So just try that again. Don't grab low to the ground. You use that tool so you don't even have to get that. You use that tool to bring it up to you. See, now he's guarding. He's pissed. You've been pulling on his buckle too much and you don't have to bite. How much easier is it to know the rule of thirds? Does it help a lot? Uh -oh. hey, I, I think it's. Well, you've been now. <laughs> I, I think the rule of thirds should be taught to any group of snake handlers on the planet. It makes a huge difference here. Yeah, it's going to make a huge difference when we go and when we're going to teach our new rig team members. Because normally we're just like, hey, do it like this. And we yeah. just grab where it's supposed to be, but it makes more sense to like, yeah, yeah. down for them. You know, it, it's like handling alligators. Yep. Any one of us could go catch an alligator, but there's proper hand placement. Yep. There's proper technique to secure the jaws. Yeah. You can hot dog stuff all your life, but how many fingers do you want to lose? Yeah. How many times do you want to be on the brink of death? How cool is that? We got to teach them how to properly hook rattlesnakes, uh, what to do when you're in a medical situation with a snake bite, and also how to work around alligators. Why they need to do this is because they have a big natural base and they work on that base with training and they have to keep the trainees, the army rangers safe. So they have to know how to handle these snakes. They're also licensed so they can relocate snakes to the different parts of the property. And they invited me to go out and hang out and make an episode at the Eglin Air Force Base. Oh my goodness. How cool is life? Follow your dreams and stay passionate. You never know what's gonna happen. All right, we're gonna go see my boy Mick. Mick is a non-venomous snake. He's a beautiful yellow anaconda. I'm just gonna use the snake hook to get him out. If you guys remember, I got this guy from the Everglades alligator farm where I used to work, and our big female on display produced a bunch of babies, and before they were a banned species, I was able to get a permit to own yellow anacondas. Look at, woo he's getting huge. Look at him, beautiful. Yeah, uh, 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 relax, relax. Beautiful yellow anaconda. I'd like to handle him without getting bit, so let's see. If we can do that, just redirect him a little bit. Relax, buddy. Look at that beautiful yellow anaconda. So we're either going to put him inside this 250-gallon tank over here or 225-gallon tank so he can have all of the water to swim around, and then we're going to have a custom cage built on top with land so he can utilize this whole enclosure. So we're going to use Mick, the yellow anaconda, or we're going to put the two green anacondas in here. Comment below what I should do. I think visually the yellow anacondas are really pretty. I'm really surprised he hasn't bite, bit me yet, so that's good. Don't yanks it. I know, I feel like I'm totally jinxing it right now. Woo! Woo! Mr. Yellow Anaconda, he likes to bite, but all you have to do is tell him he's sweet and nice. <laughs> all right, Mick, no biting. You just look at Ruth. We're gonna get him into the can, nice and easy. Whoa, whoa, there we go. He's gone big. He's gonna be like six foot plus right now. Wow, I didn't get bit, how cool is that? Why don't you learn a little lesson, Duff does nature stuff? <laughs> oh, you catch pythons, but you can't handle yelling kind of without getting bit. Ooh, ooh. Let's get this baby open. Let's see if we can get him out without taking a bite. Ruth, go ahead, Ruth. Go ahead, help me handle this yelling anaconda. You grab it like this. Go ahead, grab him. Ah! <laughs> yeah, they bite. Oh, man, now you got him riled up. Here you go. Here. Whoa! Get Ruth, not me. I didn't do anything to you. He's so beautiful. Let me see and we call him Mick because of that Mickey Mouse pattern. Where is it? There you go, right there. Yeah, touch him right there. Point it out, Ruth. Right there. <laughs> there. <laughs> All right, back in your enclosure, buddy. So everyone's getting a nice upgrade. Don't bite me, buddy. Relax. They are so beautiful. One day we're going to get out to Venezuela and catch green anacondas and yellow anacondas, and it's going to be a good old time. Hopefully, Ruth and I and a few more friends can make it out there to Venezuela. There we go. Locked and secure. We got all the little baby covers right here. I'll give you guys a quick little update. I'll take out just a few of these guys. So we got all the baby monocle covers in here. We still have 21 beautiful little babies. And as you can see, they're all looking good. The only problem is I've already offered them frozen thawed pinkies. 
day old pinkies, they did not eat them. A couple days later, I offered live pinkies, which I hate to feed live, but with baby venomous snakes, sometimes that's what gets them triggered to eat. So we offered baby live pinkies and they did not, Woo! look at that, he's already hung up, They're ready to go. So these little monocled cobras are struggling to eat. If they don't try to eat frozen thawed or live the next time, I'm gonna have to start assist feeding them. So don't be surprised when we do an episode coming up where I have to assist feed baby monocled cobras. These guys are so small right now, but they're already passing that stage where they've absorbed the yolk inside their belly. So they need to get a meal down. So maybe I'll offer frogs, maybe I'll offer a few more things, geckos. And if it doesn't work out, force feeding is gonna be the last resort because it is a stressor for baby snakes. Put a lock on that thing. Mm-mm-mm, venom proof cages. Woo, we're getting close. 31 new cages coming through. Thank you very much, venom proof cages. I salute you, Kevin, and everything you do. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, most of all, Follow your dreams, stay, stay passionate, passionate, and, and always wipe twice. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys, bye. Friday, this Friday, yes, this Friday, May 12th, Christmas! Christmas! <laughs> buy your tickets or you're not a conservationist! I'm gonna arm wrestle Joe Wazalewski! And if I don't see you there, I'm gonna be very, very sad. Go fast! Okay, cut. <laughs>